Don't be intimidated by Elden Ring's huge map because we already found some amazing items you can find in Limgrave, the first region in the game. And getting these items will be a huge help on your first real boss fight against Margit the Fell Omen. I mean, you can totally try and fight him on your own as soon as you encounter him, which can be pretty soon depending on the path you take, but with some exploration you can easily beat him thanks to better healing items, a powerful summonable ally and way stronger weapons. And while it might be tempting to go off and set off on your own adventure, it's actually smart to follow the main path before you go exploring. Doing this will already get you some amazing items that will really come in handy for every player. So to do this, after finishing the tutorial area and entering the open world for the first time, we want to head out to the church right in front of us. Sneak past the giant knight on horseback and enter the church to find a grace point and a merchant named Kale, who for only 300 runes will sell you a crafting kit. And runes, by the way, are the current see in Elden Ring they're similar to souls in previous games you get them from defeating enemies but you drop them when you die so you want to make your way over to this merchant as soon as you have these 300 runes because with this crafting kit you can already craft a few basic items at the start but you will find pages with crafting recipes throughout the world which will allow you to craft even more items which include things like bombs special arrows and items that allow you to infuse your weapons with an element for a certain time and for only 300 runes which is really not all that much this is a steal so there's no no reason not to pick it up. Then from this church we're going to continue down the road until we reach the gatefront ruins. And there are a ton of really useful items here so the first thing we want to do is take out the guards. And now would be a very good time to try out Elden Ring's stealth mechanics as running in can result in one of the guards sounding the alarm and then every guard in the camp will come to fight you which is a bit much with your starting equipment. So instead, we just sneak around, backstab the guards or draw them away to not alert others and once the camp is clear, we can claim our rewards. The first one of which is on a pillar next to the road and contains our first map fragment. This will allow you to view your current area in much more detail and it already unlocks a pretty significant part of the Limgrave map. Then on that same side of the road are two carriages which contain weapons. There is a Lord Sorn's Greatsword in one of them, which requires strength to wield it but packs a pretty big punch. And in the other one is a Flail, which requires dexterity to wield properly but also builds up the bleed status effect on enemies. And bleed is amazing by the way, and there's a pretty powerful item you can get that lets you put this on more weapons, which we'll talk about later in the video, of course. If you like the video so far, remember to leave a like, and if you don't want to miss our next Elden Ring video, remember to subscribe as well. Now we're not not done here yet as there is also a chest hidden in these ruins. Just go over here and take the stairs down to find a room with a treasure chest. Open it to find your first Ash of War and a Whetstone Knife, which is required to apply ashes to different weapons. And you do need to get this, as Joyce discovered a different ash first, but did not get the knife, and because of that she was not able to actually put it on a weapon. So it seems that you need to open this chest first before you can really make use of these ashes, but you can of course always come back to this one and do it later if you want to visit other places first. Ashes, by the way, are an amazing new feature. More on them in a bit. Because now we want to head to the Grace Point next to the gates, after which a cutscene will play and we encounter an NPC named Melina for the first time. She gives you a whistle which allows you to summon Torrent, your mount, which is incredibly helpful for both exploration and combat. Torrent can double jump, so he allows you to reach certain areas by platforming and it can also be used to easily outmaneuver slower enemies. If you turn back from the gates and follow the road until you cross a bridge and then take the right path, you will find a large carriage being pulled around by two giants, which are a prime target to try out our mounted combat skills. Just circle them and smack them in the shins, they're pretty much too slow to fight back and once you kill one of them, the carriage will stop and you can loot the weapon, which is a great axe that requires 30 strength to wield, so it'll probably take a bit before you can properly use it. Also, keep in mind that there is a giant convoy of enemies following the carriage, so make sure to deal with them so they don't interrupt your looting. Another thing you can do now that you have your mount is actually continue through the gate. There are a lot of enemies here, even a giant that will jump down on you if you get close, so we use Torrin to just run through and follow the path until we find this illuminating tree. And at the bottom of it is a golden seed. These are very valuable as you can use them at a grace point to increase your total number of flasks. You start out with four and you can pick how many of these restore health and how many restore FP, so your magic bar. But these seeds upgrade your total number, so now we have five to use thanks to this golden seed. 
And by the way, if you follow this road all the way to the end, you will eventually reach the Castle War Tunnel Grace Point, which is right before Margit's boss encounter. If we continue down the road, we will also eventually come across a Grace Point next to a house called the Stormhill Shack. In here's an NPC that you'll want to talk to. And a tip for every NPC you encounter in the game, it's always smart to exhaust their dialogue, so to keep talking to them until they start repeating the same line. Because in this woman's case, for example, she tells you a bit more about what's going on in the castle further up the road but after talking to her some more she will also give you the spirit jellyfish which is a spirit summon you can use in certain locations and during boss fights like with the ashes though we need an item in order to make that happen but before we go and get that make sure to grab the stone sword key on the way out these are used to open these paths blocked by gargoyles there's one already in the tutorial area although so far i wouldn't recommend that one is the only thing i found there was a lot of pain but it's nice to already have one so you can open these gates when you come across them now we want to teleport back to the church where we met the merchant and we'll find a new NPC here called Rena, who gives you the lone wolf spirit summon and the item we need to actually use these summons. And while they do cost a bit of FP, so the blue bar under your health to use, they are really useful in boss fights, especially the jellyfish. Not only can it poison the boss, which will let it take damage over time, and of course the longer the fight goes on, the more damage this will actually do, but the jellyfish in particular is great for tanking some hits for you while you heal. Like, look at this guy face tank Market's hammer slam like a champ. He doesn't even care. There's even a way to make these spirit summons even stronger though, and the first thing we need to do for that is get access to the round table hold the hub area of the game now it's a bit unclear how you actually unlock this area for me it unlocked after resting at the saint bridge grace point over here but others have mentioned the stormville main gate which is located directly after market's boss fight i personally think you unlock the hold when the game notices you are leaving the first part of the limgrave map in which case going to the saint bridge is easier as you don't have to fight a boss to reach it what is always the same though is that you access it by sitting at a grace point after which melana will appear and teleport you to the round table hold after that you you can always teleport back to this area so as soon as you've had Melana appear and take you there for the first time you're good to go. And once you visit the round table hold for the first time you want to check if we can find Rodrika here, the woman who was kind enough to give us the jellyfish spirit. Don't worry if she isn't there yet, fast traveling to this location should reset it and load in new NPCs if available so try that a couple of times after exhausting her dialogue in the Stormhill shack and she should appear in the main room. Talk to her here again and she will mention that she is looking for a purpose. After that, go look for the blacksmith who is in one of the side rooms and ask him about the woman. He will mention that she has a gift for spirit tuning. From here, you go back to Rodrika to tell her this, then return to the blacksmith and convince him to take the girl in. If you now fast travel to the round table hold again, you will find Rodrika opposite of the blacksmith and she will tell you he has taught her how to attune spirits. So now she becomes a vendor in your hub that allows you to upgrade spirits in trade for grave glove wards, which can usually be found in catacombs from the looks of it. And there's actually already one pretty close to the church where we met Kale and Rena called the Stormfoot Catacomb. So you can go there and collect some of them and already upgrade your spirits by one level. <laughs> and while having a spirit summon is already a big help against Margit, there's even even more you can do to improve your chances. Let's head back to the gatefront ruins and go the opposite direction from the gate again, but instead of turning right to where we found the giants, we want to follow the path left. You'll find an NPC called Height here a bit further down the road, talk to him as he will give us a reward for something we're going to do in a bit anyway, then we continue until we reach another church, the third church of Marika. This location contains two amazing items, a sacred tear that will allow us to upgrade our flasks to plus one so they restore more health and FP, and the flask of wondrous physics which lets you slot in different effects so you can create a custom potion the first effect you get with the flask is the one that restores half of your health so it's effectively for now an extra healing flask until we find more however if we make a small detour first we can make this flask even more effective because there is already a second tier we can find to mix into it and for that we want to head back to the stormhill shack Jump on your mount to make your way over here on the map, you'll know that you're in the right place. If you see a giant, just ignore him or kill him, up to you, but grab the item in the bowl over here to get a strength knot tear. We can slot this one next to the Crimson Crystal tier we found with the Flask of Wonders physics to create a potion that not only restores half of our health, but also buffs our strength by 10 points for 3 full minutes, which is pretty impressive. So if you mainly use strength-based weapons like that Great Axe we picked up earlier, this potion will give you an extra boost in damage. Damage. The best part about this flask though is that like your crimson and cerulean flasks it resets after resting at a grace point so you're free to use it as much as you like without losing any resources. 
And as you can already see, there are even more of these tiers to find so you can customize your potions. So even if you don't like the ones you currently have, there's a high chance the Flask of Wondrous Physics will become useful to you once you have found the right buffs to mix. All right, that's the detour over. Now we want to travel back to the third church of Marika again, as there are still more amazing items to find in that area. Jump back on your horse and follow the road south. You will see a familiar looking pillar on the way, so make your way over to grab a second map fragment, which unlocks the area we're currently in. And now that we have the map, we want to make our way over to this grace point here. We're now very close to that fort height mentioned, so storm past the barricades, defeat the enemies outside, and here we can pick up our second golden seed to upgrade the six flasks. We're not done yet though as probably the best reward is located in the fort itself. You can use your spirit summons to help you here, clear out the enemies and then at the top of the wall we find this knight. He's a bit stronger than the rest of the enemies here, I used my summons to distract him while I hit him in the back and then once you kill him he drops the bloody slash ash of war. This one can only be applied to swords and the weapon art you get isn't super strong per se. It's a pretty powerful slash but it costs both FP and health to use. But no, the amazing thing here is that we get to change the weapon type from any any weapon we apply this ash to, to blood, meaning it will build up the blood status effect. And like I said earlier, blood is really strong, as once the status effect is fully built up, the enemy will take a massive burst of damage. You can't see the effect build up, but you will definitely notice it when it triggers by both the damage and the massive burst of blood coming from the enemy. And it also works against most bosses I've come across, including Margit, so you can use this in your fight against him to periodically deal massive amounts of damage. Alternatively, of course, you can use the flail we mentioned earlier for the same effect but this ash allows you to put it on any sword type weapon making it much more versatile than the flail and before we forget after clearing heights fort you can return to him and he will reward you with a dagger for your efforts he will then move to the castle so if you want to continue his quest line later on that is where you will find him and with those extra healing charges a jellyfish friend at your back and this amazing bloody slash ash of war you're more than ready to take on Margit or any of the other bosses you'll come across that's all for this one remember to leave a like if you liked the video and subscribe if you don't want to miss our next one. We will be making way more Elden Ring videos with tips and amazing items, so if the next one is already up, you can watch it by clicking on the screen. For now, thanks everyone so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye!